Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you are all well. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. I think it's... Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is. And you are looking amazing, by the way. (laughs) Obviously more amazing than I feel. Yeah, I was in bed all day yesterday with what seems to be a bit of food poisoning following heading over to the Queen's estate. Well, I say Queen. The ex-Queen. King's estate. And um, they're, they're illuminate. They do this thing at Christmas where they put all uh, lights everywhere on their estate and we went and had a walk around. And part of that was to get some food. I ate some food and subsequently felt like I was going to die. But anyway, on to a different kind of meat and potatoes as we talk about... One last time I'm doing this. I ain't talking about this anymore because it's bugging the shit out of me. And that is this situation with... Dylan Mortensen, and rarely Bethany Funk. All right, we've been a little bit standoffish, if you if you like, with regards to Bethany Funk. We're giving Dylan Mortensen a load of flack. We're sort of going in on her quite hard. But at the end of the day, Bethany Funk is in exactly the same position. I, th- I think the issue we have with Dylan Mortensen is that Dylan Mortensen was the person who sort of came forward eventually and became... A witness. And that then shone the spotlight on her because this is absolute clarification that around the times that these crimes happened, she was awake. And then people are automatically going to think to themselves, well, anyone with half a brain cell is going to think to themselves, well, look, the brutality of this crime, how this crime happened, you can't tell me that she didn't hear anything. And there seems to be some huge confusion over what she heard and how she reacted to what she heard. Now, it doesn't help when articles such as the Howard Bloom article comes out and says that they, the two girls were texting between another, one another. That looks terrible. Now, no matter how many how much people want to stick their head in the sand, that looks terrible. It looks terrible when you think that they have the ability to communicate, so not so much frozen shock phase, but actively communicating with one another, but yet they can't communicate in order to obtain help. Now, I touched on something yesterday, and it was just perhaps they just didn't care enough. And do you know what? That seems to be the mentality of many young adults today. Just there, there is a lack of empathy. It is about self-preservation. And perhaps that is ultimately what this was. It was simply self-preservation. But what frustrates me is these ivory tower people who then come in like knights on horses. I, I forgot what knights journeyed about on just then. And try and stick up for these people. They'll stick up for them and be like, you know, they 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 haven't been found guilty of anything. You're 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 attacking them. You're stalking them. It ain't stalking. What we're doing is we're reporting on situations that are in the public eye. Around the time that Dylan Mortensen was out partying with friends, sorority sisters, and having a jolly good time. Her family claimed that she was not doing that, that she was basically a recluse who'd been forced into hiding almost, and she was suffering from survivor's guilt. Now, I can handle her going out. I want her to be able to go out and enjoy the rest of her life if she deserves to do as such. But we don't know 100% what any of these people around this crime deserves. That includes Brian Koberger, it includes Bethany Funk, it includes Dylan Mortens, and it includes everybody around this crime. And yes, we have focused massively on Dylan Mortensen for the aforementioned reasons. But ultimately, if you are true to your your constitutional rights, then you have to accept that until the hammer drops and there is a guilty and that that guilt is proven beyond a reasonable doubt, then there are other avenues that may eventually need to be looked at. And what are people going to do then? Are they going to whinge and moan about it? Now, people are still, when they're talking about the, the... the guilt of Brian Koberger, they are missing 
on some huge, huge issues with the PCA, with the evidence that's been pushed forward. Now, there's a link in the description of this video, and that will take you back to a video that get occluded a couple of days ago. And it is talking about the White Hyundai Elantra again. Because what people do is they pick and choose what they want to listen to. They pick and choose the, the how could I say, they pick and choose to hear what... It's this confirmation bias, isn't it? Where they pick and choose to listen to and and sort of store what best supports what they've already decided is the outcome. And and again, confirmation bias. And what Get a Clue was talking about, he's talking specifically about the White Hyundai Elantra and its route of travel. And what people have done, they've, they've ignored certain things, what have been said, like Ann Taylor stating that Brian Koberg was out driving. He was out driving. Now, people turn around and they're like, that is a shite alibi. That is a shit alibi. He's basically turned around and said that he's out driving, driving about. But what people have failed to recognise is that in the PCA, the PCA tries to tell you that Brian Koberger is at home and leaves at a specific time and heads to Washington. Not Washington, sorry. I, you know, uh, Moscow, Idaho. So he goes from Washington over to Idaho, Moscow, Idaho, at a specific time. But what they fail to do here is to plot that route. They just tell you that that's what happened. But then what they do later on, when they're telling you about his return journey, they plot it and show you on six or seven different cameras. So what they're doing, on one hand, they're proven that where they have the evidence and they have the information, they're mentality is to come forward and show you everything to bolster what they're trying to say but then on the flip side of that coin they are leaving out information and I would put it to you that they're leaving out information that they simply don't have and get a clue goes into massive detail here and I know that some people, they don't have time or they don't want to listen to certain people or certain, you know, I get that I get it, but if you are somebody who is going to convict somebody or you're going to listen to some information and use that to bolster your your thought process on on saying someone's guilty, this guy's guilty, he needs to go through due process and 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 get this over and done with. The very least you can do is take the time to listen to everything. Take the time to understand why there are people who aren't buying certain things as easy as what you are. And it is things like this White Hyundai Elantra. For Ann Taylor to turn around and say, there is no connection here. There's no connection. My client was out driving and he wasn't in this area at the time of the murders. Now, how does she know that? Because law enforcement have basically stated that these murders happened at a specific time which you have to take into consideration here whether law enforcement ultimately shot themselves in the foot by potentially fabricating a witness that would bring somebody into this area at a certain time who knows maybe brian Koberg was in this area earlier on in the night and like I say maybe they've shot themselves in the foot by saying that he was there later and they're going to later on prove this again I kind of wonder where the Berla report and vehicle vehicle diagnostics are because that would help put all this to bed but again that will likely be for the court but as it stands now as it stands now what we have access to as the public what do we have access to we have access to information that seems to provide as much information as it can in some hands to prove that they'll do it when they can but then they'll leave information out when they seemingly don't have it and then when you've got the defense requesting discovery multiple times this is why things like this is what these requests are you're showing that our client is coming back from his drive and heading home but where's your footage showing him heading to where you say he's going at this certain time where is that footage 
And I'm just guessing that that's part of the conversations that are being had. But without this information, without all these missing pieces, there is just not enough to overcome reasonable doubt. And some people could be shocked later on down the line. But with the likes of Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk, yes, they should go on and live their life. And this isn't about, like I said yesterday, this isn't about telling them they can't have a life. But they are up to their necks in this case. They were two people who were at this house at the time this crime happened. They have one who has disappeared completely off the radar, who apparently has some kind of exculpatory evidence, but didn't want to come forward and give it, and had to almost be forced. And then, just as they agree, all of a sudden there is a grand jury, which then swipes that off the table. And then you've got the other one, who in one hand wasn't a witness, and then all of a sudden is. One minute frozen shock phase, the next minute thought it was someone who was at a party and didn't think much of it. Come on. How can you sit there and not feel that there is something amiss here? Let's not forget, at the moment, Brian Koberger is being vilified, attacked, character assassination for crimes that he may or may not have committed. He is yet to be proven guilty. But these two girls who are at this house, they are apparently off limits, but we know that they committed a felony in failing to report what happened here. And you can't have your cake and eat it. Either they were messaging one another, they were awake and compass mentis and failed to report it and instead called people over instead, or they were fucking fast asleep and didn't know what was going on. There weren't a witness because there was nothing to witness. Perhaps they weren't even at the fucking house. Anyway, ran over. I'll catch you all in video two later.